Hello everyone, we are Marirena Kladeftira and Matthias Leschok, doctoral students at the Group of Digital Building Technologies at ETH Zurich, and today we will be presenting our paper Redefining Polyhedral Space through 3D Printing, which is co-authored by Eleni Skewaki and Benjamin Dillenburger. The work that we will present today is a review of a variety of methods and projects that we have been investigating at the chair through research and teaching in the past three years. Space frames are a versatile construction system used abundantly in construction today because of their low weight to span ratio while the complexity of various applications is addressed through their modular character. During the 50s and 60s, space grids were proliferated all over the world as architects like Fuller and Waxman explored the new aesthetics of the modular grid and unseen span to volume ratio, which paved the way for the development of many proprietary systems. The essence of these systems lied in the development of new connections. All the complexity of planning and assembly of the structures is encapsulated in the node that speaks about the modularity and repeatability of the system. Systems like the Mero node or the USM furniture are used until today, while almost a century later little innovation has happened. Despite the existence of many proprietary solutions, the need for custom connection has not eclipsed. However, the fabrication of one-of-a-kind parts often becomes complicated and expensive. Why is that? Industry standards rely only in subtractive manufacturing or foundry casting for the manufacturing of one-of-a-kind parts. These methods are time-consuming, requiring a lot of human labor to produce one single element and often result in a lot of waste material. Today, with additive manufacturing, we can fabricate very complex parts with minimal material waste and human labor. 3D printing allows us to rethink the way we design space frames. You are probably familiar with the 3D printed connection that was made by Arup in 2014 for a tensegrity structure. The connection was topologically optimized with existing software and 3D printed with selective laser sintering. Other examples of 3D printed connections since then include the multi-thread project from Kram and Weishar. The simple male-female connections were 3D printed and coated with color to reflect the stresses in the structure. A very similar project followed by the Air Lab at the Singapore University of Technology and Design, where a table was designed and fabricated with steel 3D printed connections with a threaded detail. However, there is a lot of unexplored territory on the bidirectional relationship of spatial structures. New opportunities are presented to create bespoke, informed, even ornamented connections that have not yet raised the questions what kind of structures we can design. What we seek to present here today is a plethora of systems, new methods for designing for additive manufacturing in order to achieve new types of structures. A series of studies on computational design processes are examined in this chapter to demonstrate the possibilities of design from a seamless, stiff connection to a dissolved space network structure. We talked about the digital design tools that allows us to create complex forms. In the recent past, we learned to design with boundary representation of objects. We rely on vertices that define edges and surfaces in three-dimensional space to describe a solid volume. The combination of such shapes typically happens with Boolean operations. The bigger the number and the more complex the shapes, the more difficult it is to perform those operations successfully and without errors. So what if there was a different way to design these elements? What if three-dimensional space was a field of values that represent the results of certain real functions? Here we can see a 2D section of two spheres whose equation is well known and the field of values that is generated. You can see that the boundaries are where the values are zero. Negative values indicate the inside of the object, while positive ones the outside. And so the problem of combining shapes now translates to the manipulation of a value field. Designing with distance functions or volumetric modeling allows for a smooth process where blending of shapes, connection details, assembly data, and tags can be embedded into one single object without the cumbersome effort of managing Boolean operations in robust software. Thanks to our colleague Matthias Bernard, we used Axolotl, a grasshopper plugin he developed, 
to design a simple joint that incorporates all the necessary functions for assembly while maintaining the smallest volume possible. An initial network of curves is connecting all the elements which meet at the node. Along this network, we compute the distance function for the circular sections, blend them and incrementally add or subtract the additional details for assembly. Those can be additional parts that facilitate the assembly of triangulated modules, as you can see on the screen, a slit part connection that allows the insertion of members from the side, or mechanical details such as a thread in which a steel rope can be fastened to. Using this streamlined process, you only encode once all the necessary details in the design process. In this way, we minimize the post-processing of geometries or error handling and directly create fabrication data in a precise manner. These nodes were developed for a prototypical column-like structure that due to some delays related to the pandemic will be assembled this spring. So far, we have believed 3D printing to be the means by which we can reduce material or add information to our connections. But what if we were to question the very form of those connections? Volumetric modeling, or VM, is not limited to the creation of primitive shapes. On the contrary, it's liberating, as mathematical equations can be used to describe non-standard connections. For the following two projects, we worked with four students of the MISD Fab in 2018 to create some unconventional table designs. Complex shapes can be easily described and meshed, and thus qualities of spring-like geometries can be expressed through knot theory. Here, six different topological knots equations were explored in order to create a unique connection system of varying stiffness. After a set of six interesting knots were identified, the next two steps were to define ending directions in predetermined angles, and then by combining the distance objects of the same or different knots, the students were able to create a family of connections. How these knots are merged together defined the degree of flexibility of each connection. The combination of different types allowed us to imagine combinations of semi-flexible structures that can adapt to local conditions. Here you can see a prototype that the students assembled at the end of their investigations. The second project in this direction we would like to talk about is another type of soft connection. So far the nodes connected one end of a member with another. But what if linear members were positioned in space unobstructed and the node would to be squeezed and formed between them? A more unconventional approach investigates the use of soft body simulations for designing flexible connections. The nodes shown here are generated through a series of soft body collision simulations, leading to geometries that are unpredictable, fit perfectly to the constellation of members while being unique and could not be created in any other way. The process starts with primitive shapes which follow motion paths and attractors. As they collide with other objects, they exhibit plastic deformation according to the compressive bending, shearing or stretching behavior. Two distinct cases are studied. The first one consists of primitive shapes that are initially outside of the constellation of bundled elements. Attraction forces pull those primitives towards the bundling point, deforming those shapes onto the bundled elements. The result is an organic connection where all the deformed pieces click together. The second case consists of one sphere situated between the elements. As the elements move closer together, the sphere deforms and encapsulates them, providing both the interface between the elements and a locking mechanism. As the structure is assembled and loaded, the pressure in the joint squeezes the members, locking them in place. These are some of the prototypes with 3D printed nodes that were formed through this process. And here the final table that was printed and assembled with one single connection where all three members snap in. Now we want to shift the topic in some more controlled topologies of connections. An investigation of a mesh grammar allows the formation of geometrically complex nodes in consecutive iterations. Considering the static principle of the structure we design, we can inscribe stiffer areas by adding material only where needed through the construction of the initial geometry. 
Trigonometric rules define the minimum bounding volume of the node according to the collision of profiles that come together to the node point's end. The linear members are moved back to a new set of endpoints, for which a convex hull is defined. The edges of a convex hull are used to further define the main ribs of the node by creating the faces between N and the three adjacent edges that form a closed boundary. The faces are offset according to the profile width of the linear elements. Then they are split and perforated according to custom subdivision rules. These faces represent the stiffening ribs that are visible later in the node. We compute the faces around the profile of the linear members to the core N of the node so that they are adjacent to the stiffening ribs. This will later create the host profile that matches the diameter of the linear members. In a second step, we generate all the faces that are necessary to form a closed volume so that we obtain one solid geometry. And finally, with known smoothing subdivision methods, we obtain the final organic porous geometry. The specific sequence was used to ensure that perforation and reduction of material are in plane with the axial fore flow and thus the rib orientation is able to fully support the connection. The resulting object showcases a unique topology where structural qualities such as stiffening ribs are embedded in the generative process. The last and most abstract joint definition was developed in a collaborative project at the MAS DFAB at Edeha Zurich led by Manya May Body. We are all familiar with the problem of assembling a triangle when we have a male-female connection types. In order to avoid this problem, we develop a system where the connection becomes the digital matter that encompasses the members of the structure, which will not meet in one point anymore. We define an algorithmic process where each connection is dissolved into a micro-network of elements within the overall structure. First, we identify all the elements that are close, given a certain tolerance to the node center. As the proximity members are identified, a new point for each member is defined along its axis. In the next step, a network is generated between the set of points following stiffening and stability criteria. Each point has at least three neighbors in the network, but no more than five. Around the point itself, a cylindrical geometry is designed to host a linear member. The edges of the network, as well as the nodes, are used to generate the distant field values from which a triangulated mass is generated using the marching cubes algorithm. The result is an interwoven connection around the area point N. This process allows the more abstract definition of a connection element. The same process can create a larger element that connects a plethora of roads, which one could say becomes the structure itself. This is the case of an element you see in the picture where one connection element of a structure is designed to balance between joint and sculpture, bringing together dozens of different aluminum rods. The design strategy shown in this paper can be understood as a canvas for design explorations for future prefabricated special structures. The different null typologies presented today are designed with a specific added manufacturing method and material in mind as all of them are too complex to be manufactured using traditional fabrication techniques. The geometrical freedom to create unique connections will ultimately lead to a more versatile approach for space frame design. Nonetheless, being able to create nearly anything computationally and physically raises a question on how we must design for these new fabrication methods. Finally, all methods presented were tailored to small projects that gave content to the design and drove decision on geometrical articulation. Every method shows advantages on different aspects. Volumetric modeling offers an unmatched advantage on preparation of files for 3D printing. Physical simulations provides a tool to create unexpected forms, but also a new approach where all elements is in a structure organically interlock. Mesh grammars create rule-based processes informed by structural performance and fabrication limitations. And finally, in these joint structures, new rule-based approaches can provide new and filigree connections driven by the ease of assembly. Finally, we would like to acknowledge the work that was conducted in collaboration with students of the MAS DFAB, Belen Skivaki, Ben Ken Yang, Antonio Barney, and Raul Kiris. 
The dissolved network joint was developed with authorities Kittel for the liquid metal pavilion led by Manja Maybody and Benjamin Dillenberger. The authors would finally like to thank Matthias Bernhardt and his axolotl plugin for his support and guidance, especially in volumetric modeling. Thank you very much.